www.ghostbusters.co.za Because being locked in doesn't mean you have to be left out. Coming up at three. Coming up at three. It's the Afternoon Drive with John Matham. Only on Cape Talk. Join the conversation. Cape Talk. Cape Talk. Call Pepper Hudson now. 021-446-0567. It is 12 minutes past two, and to those I've not met before, welcome to Cape Talk and welcome to my show. My name is Pepe Hudson. Delighted to have an extended audience joining us today because not only are the usual crowd listening in on Cape Talk, but a special warm welcome to the additional audience joining us online. The rest of our show today is given over to our first live studio audience by Zoom, which is being hosted in partnership with Exclusive Books and Penguin Random House. And to those who are joining us on Zoom or on the Facebook live stream, thank you so much for your support. We're glad to have you listening today, and we hope you're going to find this content both helpful and enlightening. Uh, for those listening on air right now, if you would like to join the video stream, we've tweeted the link to the Zoom conference, and you can also find us on Facebook uh, if you want to follow. What is it all about? Well, we are talking teens in lockdown, uh, something I'm acutely personally aware of. I've got two of them in my own house right now, and they are chomping at the bit to escape and get back to their friends and their surfboards. And I know we are very privileged to be worrying about that when other teens are worrying about where their next meal is coming from and whether they're going to be able to finish their matric syllabus in time. And expressing our compassion for them and helping our more privileged teens recognize their reality. That's one of the things we are going to be talking about today, as well as sharing some ideas on how to use this time in lockdown for positive family bonding. And to help us try and make sense of it all and find some strategies to help our teens uh, deal with their aversion to lockdown. It's a great pleasure to welcome our guest, Megan DeBear, who is the author of How to Raise a Man, The Modern Mother's Guide to Parenting Her Teenage Son. Um, those of you who listen to the show will know I spoke to Megan earlier this year about that book. She's got more than 20 years experience as a psychologist, not only here in South Africa, but internationally as well. She has specialized in family relationships and particularly in working with teens. And she's one of the co-founders of the hugely popular Facebook platform, The Village which so many of us rely on for our sanity and for advice from those who walk the road with us. Megan, it's lovely to have you on the show again in this uh, different format. Thank you for joining us and welcome. I'm very excited to be here, Pippa. Thank you for inviting me in and what an amazing format you've, you've got together here. It's Incredible. lots of fun. New stuff for all of us. Let's hope we manage the technology ourselves. <laughs> a reminder, just for those who are listening in on the radio, as always, you are welcome to send your questions in, your comments. You can WhatsApp us on 0725671567. Our SMS line is at your disposal on 31567. You can phone in and chat to us on 0214460567. And to those of you who are with us on Zoom, um, there are well over 100 people joining us, I think, uh, probably something like 200. So you will understand with apologies why we've had to mute everybody for all obvious reasons, not the least of them, the moody teenagers shouting at us in the background. But we would love you to engage as well. There is a and a format on Zoom, which you are welcome to use. Type your name and your question into that chat box. And Megan and I will keep an eye on those questions and uh, weave them into our conversation. So let's get to it. Megan, I know you wanted to start with a, a quote to help us all sort of shift yes. our mindsets a bit, didn't you? Yes. So this quote, uh, Pippa, inspired me many years ago, in fact, about 2002, when I first um, launched a course called Strong Mother, Strong Sons. And it, it inspired me because it resonates with my attitude, which is intentional parenting. Um, and how we can change our mindsets and come into a parenting approach um, that's, that's really sensible in the mind, but also coming from the heart. So mm -hmm. it's a Kill Hill Gabrand quote, and it's called, Your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And they are with you, yet they belong not to you. We may give them, you may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls, for their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are set forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the internet and he bends you 
with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending be in the archer's hand for gladness. For even if he loves the arrow that flies, he also loves the bow that is stable. So I love that quote. You know, it reminds us, it alters our mindset. It takes us back to basics. It takes us back to the necessity of being there for, the, for our children in the best way we possibly mm. can and with love, with compassion, with care. So it takes us back there and reminds us that our children are not to own. Our children are to um, set forth into the world of tomorrow. And, and so that really inspires an intentional parenting approach, Pippa. I love that concept. And it's particularly, I think, meaningful given that tomorrow is such an unknown quantity right now, Megan. Um, you know, I look at the last couple of weeks, I am profoundly grateful to my two kids. They have been so well behaved through these last few weeks, but I know they are tired. They're tired of reading. They're tired of Netflix. They're tired of cleaning toilets for sure. They're tired of trying to do some kind of schoolwork on their own and being cooped up inside and not being able to spend time with their friends. And, you know, as much as we've been saying to them, hang in there, we've got to remember this is not, it's a marathon, not a sprint. They're also anxious because we don't know how long this particular marathon is going to last. And it's very hard to pace yourself for a race if you don't know how many kilometers are, are lying in front of you. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do to help them face, for starters, this new reality, this very different world that they've just been thrust into through no fault of their own and completely without choice. Yeah. I think I love the analogy you've made about the marathon because there's not one of us that are going to show up at the starting line of the comrades <laughs> without mm -hmm. having trained appropriately. So I think that this is really important word is how can we kind of train for this race and have we trained for this race? Mm. So of course, first off, we haven't. Okay, we haven't. Why? Because we've been so busy doing, having, getting, performing, um, you know, we never feel like we have enough. Our attitude has always been get out there, uh, do more, have more. No, you, you know, you've got to achieve more. You've got to get more done. You've got to get into that best university. Um, we've, uh, you know, and then of course, for those uh, people who are less fortunate, it's about flip. I've got to work all day. I can't come home and worry about the, the kids and how they're feeling, you know, actually I'm feeding them and that's enough, you know. So it's kind of like where our attitudes have been, have often been tied up with things that are not the essentials. So we've been called in now to say, hey guys, let's go back to basics. Let's go back to absolute basics. Do we have enough? Yes, we do have enough. Because, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a roof over your head, a, a, a meal on your, on, your, on your plate, and you've got uh, someone who cares for you, loves you, believes in you, can hug you, oh my God, you are wealthy. You are really wealthy right now in these circumstances. These are very changed circumstances. And it needs a very radical, radically different approach. And you are right in saying that we are tired. There is no doubt we are tired. So I want to bring every parent's um, thoughts to there. Are they tired because they still feel like they've got to do, 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 get, get, get. And isn't this next phase, even if it's just these next three weeks, a phase of going back to basics and just really drawing on those qualities that as a mother and as a parent, we know so well, which are the qualities of attunement. And attunement means listening in, listening into your kids, listening into your own heart, listening into also what you need as a parent and, and taking that bit of time, even if it means that you have to go sit in the car for 10 minutes or for 20 minutes, go sit in the car for 20 minutes and just do some deep breathing. Take your, you know, uh, your, your favorite novel that you're reading um, or, or your best music and just sit there for a moment and calm down and take time. We've got to go back to basics. We've got to look at how we are showing up. How are you showing up with an open mind, open heart, uh, a willingness to kind of be there for, for, for the children? So I think my first point, Pippa, is a strong one. Be here right. Be here right now. Show up with who you are, what you have, with your vulnerabilities, with your cracks, with your difficulties, 
Stop trying to be the perfect parent, um, the perfect mother, the perfect wife. Stop that. It, it doesn't matter. Be here now. Come back to basics. And I know for sure, after years and years and years of, of, of my meditation practices, that deep within all of us are those qualities we all love, those qualities of care, kindness, our ability to give, our ability to be happy when our kids are happy, our love of affection and hugging. We are those people. And we've got to remember that we have a resiliency and, and, and also these beautiful human qualities that need to come to the fore. So that's my kind of big message, uh, uh, Pippa. But of course, I know that parents are rolling their eyes probably, and teenagers rolling their eyes like, oh, that's all good. Well, we just love each other. You know, what about the fact that, you know, we can't even speak to each other right now. So mm. I know that there are practical uh, questions out there but I just wanted to say the one thing we can control right now is our attitude and our mindset and we need to get our mindset right we are resilient human beings we have been through world wars we have been through flipping us ages our ancestors I mean we can do this there was life before corona there's life after corona and we've got the resilience we've we just got to find that will but are we using our energy to get things done or are we using our energy to go back and tune back in to all those things that are good for us? What are those things that are good for us, that lift us up, make us feel well? What are the natural highs instead of reaching for the alcohol and the drugs and mm. the doing and the tennis and the, you know, the, the next stock we can buy? Let's go back to, to an actual fact, just being here right now. Everything who I am, just who I am is the most important thing because I can start there. The journey of a thousand miles starts here with this first step. So right now, every parent who is listening, just start with where you're at right now. The next hour is another hour. Tomorrow is another day. If you need to say sorry about yelling last night, say sorry and mean it and find those qualities of goodness, kindness, caring, be there. As a, as a parent more than anything. Our children need comfort, they need emotional bonding, and they need to know that you are there for them. That is what they need. They don't need another Nike tacky. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. So that's sort of like what I'm hopping on about right now, Pippa. Yeah. And it is so true. When I change my attitude, I certainly feel so much better. There's a lovely message in from Anna Marie who's listening saying, I so agree with you. I'm enjoying not living my best life right now and just appreciating the simple things. And uh, as I said earlier, I'm enjoying living in my tracksuit pants for a large portion of the day. Um, and and uh, you know, your priorities shift at a time like this, Megan. They shift for the parents. They shift for the kids as well. They have to. Uh, their ways of connecting with one, one another have changed profoundly. In many ways, they're cut off from connections that are so important to them as teenagers. Um, I mentioned at the start, uh, I wanted to touch on the issue of how we talk to our teens in particular about what everybody is going through and make them cognizant of the fact that, yes, you may be worried about not chatting to your friends, not being able to go surfing, what's happening with your schoolwork. Other people are worrying about life and death matters of hunger and illness. And I've had a couple of qu uh, parents question me over the past couple of weeks about how much you discuss with your, your children about what is going on in the wider world there seems to be a hesitance to scare them that nobody wants to fear monger and make children terrified of, of what's going on. But at the same time, I think there's quite an important learning opportunity here for what you want to role model and teach your children about compassion and acts of kindness and uh, making them acutely aware of, of privilege if they are in a privileged position. Megan, do you think it is appropriate to have those conversations at this time or right. is it too much to load on them? So, so Pippa, as you know, my approach is conscious parenting. So, so with this approach, the first thing is forget about what you are about to say to your children and how much you're going to share with them. Go back to how you are feeling, what you are doing. What are you doing as a parent? Are you like reading, ev obsessively reading every bit of news that's so contradictory that you never know what's the truth and what's not the truth? Are you getting yourself in a complete mangle because you don't know? Um, 
you know, is it this stat or that stat, you know, and what's exponential growth and what's not, you know, are you getting yourself obsessed with trying to work out the facts? And that is, I must let you know, a trauma response. That's a normal response to trauma that our minds would want to engage and go over and over and over the facts. We become quite hypervigilant in times of trauma and our mind almost becomes a computer. It keeps saying, what's true? What's not true? What's right? What's going on here? How can I sort this out? How can I sort this out? And, and so that is a trauma response. And all of us already got a bit of post-traumatic stress disorder <laughs> as it is. So let's just try and not make it worse by not becoming obsessed Um, with, with Facebook, Twitter, news, news, should we watch Fox, should we watch CNN, should we watch, you know, just actually begin to calm down, choose something like Cape Talk, which I think is amazing. So just choose your news, Thanks, you man. know, choose your news and, 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 and trust those guys. And if you don't agree with them, speak up, speak out, go back in, but stop jumping around. And so calm your own system down first. You cannot even begin to have that conversation with your team if your mind is scattered and your emotions are, are confused and mixed up. Calm yourself down, calm your fight flight response down. So those of you who are listening, you don't know what the fight flight response is. The moment there are traumatic incidences, the moment we have a vision, the moment we're feeling anxious, stressed out, we get this um, automatic body response, which is we want to go out there and we want to fight or we want to get out of there and just jump under our duvet or we freeze and we actually then go quite cold actually we we, we 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 don't know what to do and we feel quite hopeless and useless so the only way through that is by calming your nervous system down deep breathing stretching uh, I know this is probably the wrong thing to say but those of you that can have a hot shower or hot bath you know do it um I'm still loving jumping into my cold pool. I'm lucky to have a pool and I jump in that cold pool. It really shakes, you know, it just kind of lessens that, that kind of body stress that's going on. So um, do, the, do those things that you know calm yourself down. Um, re go back to reading and watching stuff. That's great, you know, so that you can calm your nervous system down. And then once you start getting calm, you're then able to think more clearly. And then when you think more clearly, you're able to say, okay, what as a parent should I share with my teenagers? The first thing is my attitude. The first thing is my attitude. So can I get my attitude into a place of resilience for the sake of the children? Okay, for the sake of the children. If you don't want to rate yourself and look after yourself, that's all very well. But for the sake of your children, then start looking after yourself and find a, 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 a very good present attitude where you can show up in a, in, a, in a fairly calm way and say, right, these are the facts that I know. Some of them are contradictory. And for all teenagers, I'd say any teenager from even 13 years up, 100% you could teach, you could say to them, look, these are the facts. This is what we know. They're quite contradictory. And, and so we know that, that uh, uh, science is telling us right now that we've got to be scared of this, you know, incredible uh, eruption, this growth of, of, of coronavirus. And it's our, basically, the truth of it is, is that it's our medical system that can't cope, not ours as South Africans, the worldwide. So the medical system is not getting it. So what we're really doing right now is just helping systems to come online. That's what we're doing, you know, and that's why we, we social distancing longer. So I think get with the facts and then, and then share that with the teenagers. And, and yes, there's no doubt that there's room to say, for goodness sake, I wouldn't start sweating about whether the fact that, you know, your, your, your fringe is long and you've got your hair cuts so bad, you know. So, I mean, yes, of course you can do that as parents. Is, is just pull them up and say, look, right now we've got bigger and greater things to worry about than whether your haircut's working or not. So yes, there's room for that sort of stuff, but there's also room for, for listening, for listening for those little grabs and, and moans and groans, and just really listening. 
Yeah. We're going to pause there very quickly to take our news headline update, jerking us back into the hard facts reality. It's going to be a quick 60 second break and then the conversation continues with psychologist uh, Megan DeBeer. Uh, first though, Wesley Peterson of the Eyewitness News team has the latest headlines for us. Thanks, Papa. Good afternoon. Matrix will most likely return to school on the 18th of May. That's the word from the Basic Education Department, briefing Parliament's Education Committee's Cabinet and the National COVID-19 Command Council today on the Department's plan for the phased reopening of schools. An official announcement is expected tomorrow. Cash-strapped retailer Edcon is planning to file for voluntary business rescue to continue operating. In a statement, the company, which owns Edgar's and Jet, says it's lost 2 billion rand in sales since the president declared a state of national disaster over the COVID-19 outbreak last month. And in the Northwest, gold mining company Village Main Reef has agreed to, to postpone its retrenchment process until after the nationwide coronavirus lockdown. The company had planned a turnaround of its operations that could lead to job cuts. The unlisted miner controlled by China-based parent company Heaven Sent Gold now says it had a meeting this month and agreed the process would be halted until after the lockdown. These and other stories at three or as they happen. You're with Cape Talk. This is Pippa Hudson on Lunch. Thank you so much to Wesley Peterson and thank you so much to Megan DeBeer, psychologist and author of How to Raise a Man, The Modern Mother's Guide to Parenting Her Teenage Son. She's my guest for the remainder of this hour. We are talking on a Zoom conference as well as live on air in an event that is hosted in partnership with Exclusive Books. And a huge thank you to them for making this possible. Uh, Megan's book is available from the Exclusive Books website and uh, we're all waiting with bated breath to find out when they're going to be able to reopen the bookstores. So the minute they do reopen, you'll be able to charge in and buy a copy and at the end of the, the interview I'll remind you uh, of those details again. Uh, for now Megan I, I'm smiling slightly at the SMS in just, just in from Fiona who says I know it is hard on everyone but gosh the moods are hard to deal with. Uh, mine is kind and helpful one day and then the next day just being asked to make his bed brings on an eye roll and a bad temper. I know moodiness is normal and it's wrapped up in hormones but it does seem worse than usual. Um, Fiona you're not alone. I hear a chorus of you're not alone listening to this conference right Megan <laughs> yes we are all in it together okay never mind about our teenage moods we've got the moods too okay so just to say I, I just want to remind parents with teenagers and this is boys and girls I know my books particularly for boys but I do deal with girls as well yeah. and it's remember that the teenage impulse is an impulse for independence. It's an impulse to connect with friends. It's an impulse to separate from the family. Why? Because evolution says that teenagers need to discover um, their own values, their own opinions, um, their own life path. They need to discover who they are separate to the family. So there's this strong natural impulse that's driving a teenager away. And what is lockdown doing? It's locking them up in the home so it's bad for us but i'm telling you it's doubly bad for teenagers because they've got to hold back uh, on this natural dna impulse that's 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 wanting to shoot them out there into the world because they are our future they are the ones that have need to discover um about life to make the mates that they they want to carry forward into their life they are the ones that need to find out who they are and what they want to do uh, with their lives and and being at home is preventing that and of course they think that they're much smarter than us that they know more than us and often as we know they do okay <laughs> so this and and then of course we got this awful habit of repeating ourselves a hundred times you know yep. and it's like chill mom i've heard that you've said that yesterday and the day before so i think there's there's uh, this opposition is absolutely natural and i think we've got to cut them some slack and um cut them by uh, some slack by, by sometimes just actually ignoring it so every time they're in a bad mood it's not like rushing in and saying what's wrong what's wrong what's going on now you know speak to me speak to me you've got to speak mm -hmm. so stop doing that and stop doing oh my god your bad mood just affects all of us you are just the one that's like destroying our home with that 
sulky face, you know. So stop that criticism as well. And sometimes just simply ignore it. Just ignore it. And if he speaks to you in a bad way or your daughter speaks to you in a, in a really lousy way, just hold up your hand and just shake your head and just say, that means I'm not going to speak to you until you speak to me decently. And, and so pull some parental rank but also give them some space and, and learn, 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 learn the art of putting your own earplugs in and listening to your own music, okay? And, and actually not being so child sensitive to every mood that's, that, that's, that's happening. So, and if you do need to say, go to your room and calm down or go and have a, a nice shower and I'll make you a cup of tea, show a little kindness. But don't react to every bad mood that's come in. I did get a question come up Papa, yeah. from, from someone who was saying, um, I feel so bad in a, in a more privileged environment that, I, that we as a family can't help uh, the less fortunate. Uh, we don't know what to do. It's unsafe mm. to go out, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we can't go out. Um, so I think my big thing there is let kindness start in the home. Because sometimes it's the most difficult thing for us to be kind to those closest to us. So we might want to rush out there and save the world. But are we being kind in our own home? And we all know friends that we know would like a phone call from us. So take that little bit of extra time. Make that phone call to a friend or message to a friend or join one of those uh, uh, Zoom chats and, and show up kindness first because kindness ripples out it is an energetic field and if we can start with ourselves with our families with our loved ones with our friends i i, I promise you it will make all the difference i know that we can't um help like we would like to help and 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 that shows you know what what a kind and resilient nation we are that we that we are reaching out and we do want to help and there are other ways of doing that I mean, there've been extraordinary examples in the last couple of weeks and the stories continue to stream in um, and we love sharing them of how people are helping where they can and how they can. But that's such an important reminder, I think, Megan, that there are ways to help that don't have to involve donating money. We know some people are in the position where they simply cannot do that because of their own circumstances right now. It doesn't mean that you are not able to offer support and comfort to somebody else who is in need of that at this time. Um, can we talk a little bit about exercise, Megan? Because I mean, it, it's grating on the adults as much um, as the kids that we are not able to go out and exercise freely. And we still are waiting on clarity on what is going to happen in level four. It looks like some form of exercise is going to be allowed, but we don't know what. And it's going to be restricted for some time. I'm acutely mindful of, for teenagers in particular, exercise is so important. It's so important in just their, their bodily systems and their ability to blow off some of the steam that they're carrying around. And not being able to do that is, is tough on them as much as it is on us. Do you support the idea of encouraging them to try and find something that they can do at home, oh, even if it is skipping on the spot? You know, but let's go back to the basic surefire wellness things. Eating right. So take your hand out the cookie jar. Stop that sugar. Don't, you know, honestly, just let's get, get back to, to healthy eating. I know food's the big thing right now because yeah. it's, it's, you know, so, um, but so food, sleeping, napping, um, essential uh, music that calms you down. And then of course, exercise. Exercise needs to be a daily thing. We are, we have these bodies that need to move and we've got teenagers 100 percent is the surefire way to get rid of uh, stresses that are building up in the system and of course they're hanging over their their screens like i am doing right <laughs> now with their with their, their schoolwork and this builds up so much tension around here and into the jaw and it affects our sleep as well so exercise is the best way through that um i those of you who have have uh, gym uh, gym uh, contracts you'll find your gyms will have online exercise programs i would highly recommend uh, families doing exercise together um, you can do crossfit exercises together a, a family friend of mine set up an obstacle course in their lounge 
and they all had to like jump over these, you know, the, the, the school, and they yeah. had to do step up and step down, you know, on, on onto another stool, and they set up a, a, a kind of a obstacle course in their own house. So do exercise together, and I know that teenagers will roll their eyes. They don't want to do stuff with their parents, and you just say. We're doing it. You wanted that six pack. You wanted to increase your biceps. Boys love that. For girls too, right? You want to kind of um, eat more. Then we got to exercise more, and we can we can get into it. I love dance classes too. There are lots of dance classes out there at the moment. Um, I I believe I don't know what's a pay thing, but I believe the Nike apps. Uh, exercise things are incredible i'm okay. told i'm also told that um there's an amaze there's endless yoga classes um that are for free as well that can be found on on youtube um as as, as, as well as other sites i um I think that those if if you haven't got time for lengthy exercises there's a, there's those quick, short, fast, high cardio exercises because, of, of course, cardio is going to be very important because that's what's lacking right now. We're mm. not doing those steps. We're just not doing those steps that we need to fit in, in today. And then do not forget the stretching. And I'm loving um, body brushing at the moment. I know it sounds weird, but it's very relaxing, especially for kids with attention deficit. Um, kids who have got high arousal systems um, mm -hmm. get them before their bath or, or before their shower they just take a soft bristle brush and they literally just brush their body um, get back into family massage so you know really say to your son I'd love to give you a facial I'd like to give you a hand rub I'd like to give you a foot rub I'd like to give you a shoulder massage and once more don't, those teenagers will back off but just say come on just sit down let me do it teenagers mm. need help ha, uh, need touch right now and our kids all our kids every age need emotional bonding and emotional bonding only comes through physical touch or spending time together not you're not doing emotional bonding when you're just sitting there doing his homework you're not mm. doing emotional bonding when you all just sitting watching a tv program or gaming emotional bonding are those times of kind of doing nothing and if you're locked indoors pull a cushion to the window and and open that window and say right we're going to do deep breathing at the, at, at the window and we're going to watch the clouds drift dry or look at the blue sky it's there are beautiful things you can do watching the the stars at night the stars are clear at the moment mm. You know, so go together as a family, watch, change the routine, bring the magic into the mundane as well. And, and exercise would be um, a big part of that. Um, and you can add singing and with your dancing. And I know our teenagers <laughs> hate that too. So it's a case of like pushing anything. through. It's a case <laughs> of pushing through and just saying, well, I'd, right now, I don't care if you hate that I'm singing somewhere over the rainbow. It's <laughs> like, I love it. Okay. My ex so is playlist, get my computer. <laughs> we got to get a bit it. sassy. And, and in fact, pr playlists are the best thing right now for, for exercise. So if you pull out your old 70s, 80s playlists um, uh, and, and, and play some of those um, tunes and show some of the dance moves that you used to do. And, and I know my son keeps saying to me, I don't want that memory fixed on my, my <laughs> mind. <laughs> he keeps saying to me, I don't. And I'm just saying, well, it's bad. Like it's I'm there. seeing it. <laughs> you know, I'm so glad you, you, you brought that up because you've made me think of something that really lifted our family on a day where we were all feeling quite down. And, you know, everybody has these bad days. As you said, everybody is experiencing some form of trauma response here. And I think it's important that you acknowledge that uh, to the kids as well, that it's okay to have a bad day. But one thing that really dragged us out of a bad day was uh, an accidental discovery of some of our home movies back from when the kids were toddlers. We put those on, Megan, just seeing themselves as little people, seeing the funny way that they spoke and moved around and treated one another and the people and the places that they remembered. It was like somebody literally turned on the lights inside the house. Uh, it just came bubbling out of them, laughter and happiness. And, and oh. it was just such a beautiful moment from oh. a simple discovery of a CD, you know, in, in the back of a, a drawer somewhere. Yeah. If you've Don't got we need access to right those, go and laughter. find them. 
Oh, yeah. my word, laughter, any form of laughter right now. Um, I've just got a message coming in, Pippa, saying, mm. um, how do we get our kids off sugar? How do we get them to exercise? Yeah. Don't even mind, don't even want to play a board game, says this. And, um, you know, they're forever on that screen or there's a fight. And yeah. I think a reminder that too much screen usage leads is, is an addictive thing. And any addict has a come down. Mm -hmm. And so if there's too much screen usage and you're pulling a teenager off screen, they will exhibit signs of not having their fix as in like an adult would. So they would yeah. moan and groan and carry on. And I think as parents, we need to be very upfront and say, you are showing adult addict symptoms right now. These yeah. symptoms of like huge reaction to coming off, off your screen or off your, off your gaming is because you've become an addict. And it's my job as a parent to put the boundaries in and to, to, to make sure that you're not just going down the rabbit hole of, of, yeah. of on IT all day. Uh, it's not good for your brain. It's not good for your emotions. It's not good for your mental health. So I think that you just got to pull out that 30 seconds. You've got to pull out those um, uh, those games you're playing. What what uh, what are you playing at the moment, Pippa? We have we, must have played several hundred rounds of Racing Demons, which is a card game that I've played since childhood. That we we've we've demolished about four packs of cards already. It is violent and aggressive and competitive, and we're loving it. Uh, we played a couple of rounds of Pictionary and stuff like that as well. But that is the thing we keep yeah. going back to. And Charades is great. Yeah. Charades is great. And um, what's idea. that thing? Is it Katana? Settlers uh, of Catan. And yes. Yes. And that's quite involved and it takes so long to learn. I've, pl I've been playing that. And of course, I've gone back to just basic old rummy um, mm. and, and um, uh, you know, some other fun card games. But uh, pull out those card games. And even though uh, they moan, I've, I've got to say, what happens is that they might just moan the first time. And they might, you might find your teenager hovering. They do a lot of hovering where they just watch you playing and then make it fun for goodness sake put on some music you know uh, play the card game zoom in another family do your own family quiz with with um some other friends you can google 10 best quiz questions and yeah up they'll come and you so so have you know if you're going to take um uh, if you're going to pull your teenager out of their bedroom it's got to be more fun where you're pulling them to, <laughs> mm. to their bedroom. So put some effort in, you know, and, and, um, and, and pull them in. And then there's always room for parental rank. So it's, there's always room to say, okay, just play three rounds of, you know, 30 seconds with us. And then you can go back to what you want. It's, it's, uh, we need some family time together. Mm. Um, I know one family that, um, uh, they've got a, a, a balcony and a little yard and um, they've sort of got into cake and tea and they do like mm. this cake and tea on, the, you know, in the, in the little bit of sunshine on thing and they, and their teenagers, they say, are now absolutely there. You know, they might not talk much, but they're absolutely there and they're getting a break. Um, showing up for tea and cake. Oh, here's another one. Yeah. Fabulous teenage card game, Spite and Malice. Oh, now you've dusted off a memory from the recess yes. of my brain. That's a wonderful suggestion. I mean, the, the wonderful thing uh, for those who've got internet access, Megan, is there's so much out there to be found. And if you can't remember how to play Spite and Malice, go and look it up and YouTube will show you and you'll no doubt find... Yes. You know, I bet Ed Sheeran's got a video channel on how to play some of these games. That you can, That's the way yeah. to hook your kids in, is find someone yeah. their age who's teaching them. My, my daughter's been learning to knit um, uh, in, in lockdown so that she can knit beanies for uh, the newborns unit. Um, and, you know, it, it, she didn't want me to sit and teach her, but she was very happy to find a YouTuber to teach her how to knit. And that's fine with me uh, yes. because the end result is, is the same. Uh, we've yeah. got a voice note that's come in from one of our listeners on Cape Talk talking about, I think not her own kids, but the kids next door. This should be good. Let's take a listen. I've never loved my neighborhood more. My neighborhood shrieks. The children next door enjoying themselves, running around, chased by what sounds like a horrific evil witch, probably the <laughs> mom, and dad singing in a deep voice. And 
peering over the fence and watching little kids getting face painted and mom and dad with their face paintings, obviously done by the children. It's been an amazing time and I can't believe that we will ever go back to being normal again. <laughs> oh, what a lovely story. Uh, I love it. The streaks of the neighborhood. It is amazing how much, yes. yeah, it's so, amazing how much so we notice coming, as well. Yes, yes. And the little things. We're noticing the little things now. Uh, I, I certainly am noticing uh, when the butterflies are coming to my pot plants and, mm. and uh, you know, how the clouds are drifting across the sky, the birds that are singing it in the morning. I'm loving that. And, and the different uh, sunrises and sunsets, lights in the sky. Um, we have one of those more serious questions, Pippa, which is yeah. uh, my teenagers being mean to, to uh, the younger siblings. I don't know whether it's a, a female or, or a male. Um, so I think... The, the thing for all of this is always attention. And how do we, in this lockdown situation, give attention to each of the children in our homes? Mm -hmm. And we've got to be creative here. And as, as parents divide our time up where our teenager is getting our time away from the, the little ones, because all older teenagers find the, their younger brothers and sisters uh, irritating and on top of it a teenager is trying to assert themselves so they're trying to discover this assertive muscle so they use it on either their younger siblings the dog or their mother <laughs> so they like, really want to sort of build that muscle of, of being more powerful so mm. recognize it's not coming from a mean place and a horrible ugly place it's coming from frustration. It's coming from this uh, impulse to, to discover a bit of personal power. So I would say to this mother, attention. Spend some time with that teenager. Focus on what he or she likes. Uh, spend some time going um, into their bedroom or having them come into your bedroom and say, let's just like sit a while and let's have a moment together or find something to do together that you know that you would enjoy. And say to the younger ones, this is my time now with, you know, with, with John, John or Lucy. It's not your time. And I'll come to you and give you your time. So remember to try and split your attention because that's going to be very difficult all locked up in a house together. Any ideas there, Pippa, about how to be creative around that? Well, I just think it's also, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've got to say mine have been so far so good, really good about helping to keep each other busy and have been, from what I've seen, relatively happy to be together. But um, it's about recognizing that this is tough on everyone as well. And as you said earlier, cutting a little bit of slack, recognizing where it comes from, not to say that you must tolerate hurting each other or being deliberately malicious in what you're saying or disrespectful behavior. But I think uh, it, it, it's, it comes back to what you talk about a lot in your book, Megan, about conscious parenting and being mindful of, of where the response comes from. And that goes for us as parents as much as it does for, for recognizing it in our children recognizing that sometimes we respond with a not so nice comment or with a, a judgmental comment or a little bit more short than we should be, or as you say, raising our voice and that it's, it's, it's okay to have those days and it's okay to recognize that. And it's okay to apologize to your kids and say, actually that was out of line. I shouldn't have said that, or I shouldn't have shouted at you like that. And if we expect them to, to be that way with their siblings, then I think it's fair to expect that we should be that way with them as well. Yes. Yes, and, and I want to actually just come to this idea of, of good, solid parenting. So, so we can be an habitual parent where we just simply follow uh, what we were taught when we were growing up and we follow uh, the norm and we very focus on what's right and what's wrong and just coming with this you know, authoritarian down top-down approach where you, this is my house, you do the, uh, what I say and you follow the rules. Or we can get with the program and stop with the shoulds and the shouldn'ts and the must and the might not and begin to move into a more relational parenting, which is here are these precious human beings in my home. Let me open it all to get to know them, to get to know what they like, what their opinion is, what they would like to do, how they like to do. Let me listen more. Let me try and attune more. Let me empathize more. So let me pick up on how they're feeling. Let me give my kids room 
for for what it is that's going on with them and and get out of my own head about what I think is right and wrong. Um, we need to also uh, turn to our own internal world. But when we turn to our own subjective internal world, we need to do that with some care and kindness as well. We are who we are as a result of our own upbringing and all the trials and tribulations and the good things that we've been through as, 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 as adults. So we need to approach ourselves with, with more care and, and recognize that all of life, even this now amongst this, the, with the coronavirus, is dynamic. It's about growth. It's about the development. It's about change. There's always going to be change. So we've got to learn how to be more flexible and adapt. We've got to open to our children's new way of seeing the world, their ideas, their opinions, and, and, and what they like doing. So stop with the doing and the fixing and the blaming. And, and be a little uh, more self-aware, a little more, a little more open. Um, I think that we need to come back to the surefire things. What is it that our children want of us? What is it that they want? They want to know that we love them. They want to know we love them, that we value them, that we, we are there for them, that we are on their team, that we want to listen to their stories. That we, that we curious about who they're going to be. What do I hear over and over uh, 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 boys and girls saying? Boys and girls are saying over and over, mom and dad, stop worrying so much. Stop fighting so much. Stop going on and blaming each other for, for what's going on. Mom and dad, you know, just please hold back on just telling me that I'm wrong and what I should be doing all, all the time. Start recognizing the things that I am good at, that, that, that what my strengths are, and um, the person that, that I am as a human being. So, so teenagers particularly are saying to moms and dads, listen to me. Please listen to me. Please see me. See me as separate to you. See me as a human being that's, 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 that's precious and, and I've got my own life to begin to carve and lead. See that it's difficult for me. I don't always have all the answers. Our teenagers are crying out for, the, for, for moms and dads to recognize that it's tough right now for them too to try and figure out who they are in this, in, in, in this absolutely confusing um, world that we're in. Accept me more for who I am. So can we accept more, Pippa, right now? Can we just stop, 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 stop and be here now and accept a little more? Just be present with, with, with what is. Trying to find our understanding at, uh, again and get to know our children. And, 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 and not jumping in for little lectures and, and, mm. and, and, uh, and e e explaining what's right and wrong. I see there's lots of questions coming in now. Did well, so what we're we going to do, if I may pause, we have to say goodbye to our Cape Talk audience at this point. So oh. I'm just going to tell them where to find the book. And then for those who are listening uh, listening in and tuning in by Zoom and Facebook, Megan and I are happy to keep on taking some questions for another 15, 20 minutes or so. So please stay with us. And if you're listening on air, you're welcome to hop onto the Facebook page of Cape Talk and join the conversation there where the Facebook live feed will continue. For those who have to say goodbye, uh, Megan's book is called called How to Raise a Man, uh, although it is full of advice that is equally important for those raising daughters as well. I have to say that. It's published by Penguin Random House and it is available as an ebook. So if you are relying on ebooks right now, you will find it on all the major platforms. But I would really if, um, recommend getting hold of a physical copy the minute exclusive books reopens because there are all kinds of checklists in the book that are so helpful to be able to sit and physically go through yourself with a pen in hand. And um, we hope it's not going to be too long before the exclusive bookstores are open and you can go in and buy a copy. Um, so we say goodbye and thank you to the Cape Talk listeners. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you to our partners, Exclusive Books and Penguin Random House for making this part of the conversation uh, possible. And to the Cape Talk listeners, we'll leave you in the hands of the Eyewitness News team. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Everyone stay with us online for the rest of you. On capetalk.co.za, on the app, on DSTV channel 885, okay, and across we? the city on 567. Are we going to come on to Zoom? Join the conversation. You're with Cape Talk. You're with Cape Talk.
This, this is Eyewitness News. Matrix back in class by the 18th of May and a dozen staff infected at Grutteskir lab. Ellie, we're just trying to work out the sound. Okay, I think I'm with you on Zoom. Can you hear me okay, Lee? Good afternoon, I'm Wesley Peterson. As government plans to rescue the 2020 academic year, its reiterated learners' lives will not be put at risk. Parliament's education committees have told of today briefed the basic education departments been briefed on the basic education department's plan for the phase the opening of schools. Right, sorry about the uh, transition there. We had to let no. the radio audience go and reclaim the studio microphones. Yes, from yes, yes, yes. Um, I, see so we've, yeah, I see we've got quite a few participants. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one of the questions um, that, that uh, came up right now was um, this one saying that her, her son, who lost his dad when he was 11, mm -hmm seems to be regressing now at home. Her son is now 19. Um, and I would want to say to this mum who wrote in, that's completely normal, really? completely normal. So we are going to see um, children, especially a 19-year-old and even uh, young adults into their 20s, uh, feeling quite in a slump, feeling down, feeling demotivated, wondering what life has in store um, for them. And I would really want to say to that mom, just give that boy time, give him a lot of attention, listen to him, cut back on the advice, but definitely put the, the three things in place that are, are absolutely essential, eating, exercise, and 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 good sleeping then we can add on other things like uh, maybe um doing um some mindfulness exercises which you could find on those apps like headspace and inside timer mm -hmm. there's so many apps out there calm where you yeah. can do some breath work and, and some mindfulness but i would just use it as a time for him to go inward if he is is demotivated just spend a lot of trying to spend a lot of time with him, chatting to him, telling him it's okay. And one thing that children want to hear, and, and that includes the kids still in their early 20s, it's going to be okay. And we are going to work it out together. We are going to work it out together. I'm on your team and we'll sort it out. And I'm, I absolutely am here for you. I might be battling at times myself, but I love you. I care for you. So that kind of message is, 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 is essential. Pippa. I'm so glad you mentioned sleep. Um, it's something worldwide people are struggling with right now. And we actually interviewed a, a medical professional a week or two ago who said, everybody's going through it. There's been a huge rise in the number of bad dreams people are reporting. People are suffering from insomnia. Their sleep patterns are out the window. Mm. It's partly to do to the anxiety we're all dealing with. It's also partly to do with the fact that our routines are different uh, with us not, uh, not commuting to the same schedule, et cetera. But how do we help uh, a teen? I mean, the, 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 the temptation at home is, well, we're at home. We don't have to go to school tomorrow. Can we push the bedtime a little bit later than normal? Can we stay up and watch one more episode mm. of Survivor or whatever it is? Uh, and what do you think about sleep routines at a time like this? I mean, Megan, yeah. any, any advice on what to do yeah. to help uh, yeah. someone who's battling? I mean, I'm struggling. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. It's really, really tough. Yeah. yeah. I think I know that you still got to turn up for work. So do I. So our, mm. our, our, our sleep is very important. Obviously, those who do have the luxury of, you know, squeezing in a nap, 100%. Don't worry mm. so much about your sleep and just squeeze in a nap. But those of us that do have to pitch up for work, I think uh, we've got to recognize that it's not only a, our um uh, our mental state that's causing uh, our, our bad sleep. The entire system is trying to adapt to this new routine. We are stuck in very hard surfaces. We are born for the natural world. Believe it or not, we actually thrive best when we're out there in nature. And especially as Capetonians, we know how much better we feel when we've sat on the beach or walked on the mountain or gone to Kirsten Bosch Gardens or, you know, so we know that, that every now and then 
you know, we need to get bare feet on the ground. So a good tip here is if you do have even a small patch of lawn, take your shoes off, make sure you're barefoot. If you can't do that, be barefoot in your home. Feel the different textures between carpet and floor. Um, our bodies need that little bit of wildness. Uh, and then another tip for kids who are not sleeping is um, pull out all those furry blankets. I know this is going to sound weird, but these bodies we live in need uh, comfort right now. So. You, we should be hugging our kids more, especially the younger ones and the teenagers once more. We literally just say, come here. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> okay. And you've got to get sassy with that and you just do it. And if, if that's not going to happen, then at least try and do those massages on the, on, on, on the shoulders um, or give him a nice, give him or her a nice, uh, uh, you know, scalp massage. They, they, they tend to love that. But our bodies need comfort. So take out those furry blankets sleep on them, literally sleep on them or, or, or let your, your son or daughter wrap themselves up in it. Any warm things, if, if the night is one where you can put a warm thing in the bed, so, you know, either a hot water bottle or one of those uh, warmers that you can do in the, in the uh, microwave. Um, we also, um, Pippa, to you, I would say 100% try that body brushing. Mm. Because if your sleep isn't going well, don't jump to how can I fix it? Rather jump to how can I give myself more comfort? My body needs a bit more comfort. It's, it's, it's out of sorts. Yeah. It's, it, it, it doesn't know what's going on. You know, there's, there's too many hard surfaces. There's too much yeah. sterilization. I mean, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's, there's too much social distancing. So, so we need to give our body uh, much more comfort. Uh, my advice to you, Pippa, is to say, if you do wake up at night, have a good attitude. So don't do that. Oh my word, I'm up again at three. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You know, don't do that. Get up. Go and make your favorite chai tea or <laughs> sneak in a bit of hot chocolate. I mean, we can sort out <laughs> the pounds later. Uh, try not to reach for the sugar because I, I, mm -hmm. I, I know that we're all overdoing the sugar right now. But, but have that lovely warm cup of tea. Um, don't look at the news. Don't look at your Facebook or your, or your, you know, your Instagram or, or, or messages. Don't mm -hmm. do that. Leave that phone off. Take a moment in that beautiful silent home, do some deep breathing, have a warm cup. What I'm finding helps a lot is progressive relaxation exercises, and we can do that for our kids as well. So you literally say to our kid, lie down, I'm going to talk you through relaxing different parts of your body. Once I've taught you this, you can do it yourself, or mm -hmm. we can find a recording. There's lots. Lots of recordings out there of progressive relaxation. So relax the, breathe into the legs, relax the legs, breathe into the tummy, deep breath and tummy, relax the tummy, breathe into the chest, relax the chest, relax the arms, you know. So you go through yeah. every part of the body. And for younger kids, I like adding on the magic mist. The magic mist even works for my boys. And that is in the room right now, this magic mist. It's just mm -hmm. appeared. It's just arrived. And you're going to breathe this in. So close your eyes and you're going to breathe in this magic mist. And this magic mist comes from, if you want, the fairy kingdom. And it's coming in and it's tickling your whole body on the inside and just breathe it into all parts of your body. As you breathe out, you're going to breathe out all that tension. All the worries are just going to go away. The magic mist has come. How lucky are we? that it's arrived today so use those fun fairy tale type stories mm. use the imagination remind ourselves and remind our kids of happy times so i love the idea of the the photograph album but yeah. and i see a lot of people are posting up pictures of themselves on the beach and pictures of <laughs> themselves on their last holiday so we're longing for those happy scenes so remind our kids of the happy scenes but don't stop there say all right you can't sleep right now. Imagine the last time you were with your best friend and what you were doing and you were rolling down the bank. Now, start imagining that until you feel the feeling. Remember that our unconscious mind um, can translate imagination 
into reality. And it does that. And that's why we can wake up from a dream with our heart rate going mm. mad. So use the imagination. Remember the happy scene. And then say to our children right now, feel the feelings from that happy scene and let those feelings flood your body, right? Let them flood your whole body till it fills your whole body. How do you feel right now? Now just keep letting those beautiful, happy feelings uh, flood your body. What does that do? From a scientific point of view, the serotonin goes up, the oxytocin spreads through the body and it calms the nervous system down so we need to use the imagination and i love the thing of going back to story time so find a book that you know your teenager is going to love let it be a, a, a detective novel that's not too violent okay mm -hmm. and and say right after supper we're going to have story time you're going back to story time and someone in the family who reads well or you pass the book around and everyone reads a, a chapter sometimes you don't do it for an hour they'd hate that but you know do it for half an hour and 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 that's together time that's family bonding uh family bonding emotional bonding is less about doing something and and more about actually doing nothing and enjoying that bit of doing nothing and, and hanging out together. Papa, any other questions? There's, there's some up? interesting questions coming in and um, there's quite a similar theme through several of them, Megan. They're from the parents who are working and uh, we've spoken a lot about those who are at home and have the luxury of time, even if they didn't want it. Um, but I really feel for Lizelle and Sylvia and others who are working from home, who may be present in the home, but as Sylvia says, are not fully present. And it really seems mm -hmm. to have an effect on the kids mm -hmm. because we're not able to fully mm -hmm. engage. And at the end of the day, when work is done, you're often exhausted and need the meat time but they want the us time any ideas how to make short bursts sure. of engagement in the day meaningful yeah, yeah. oh how tough Pippa. Mm. first thing is just have some empathy for yourself oh my word just recognize that you can't do it all and you can't be super woman and you can't mm. be super dad either you just can't so have some empathy for yourself and um and then do take that oxygen mask for yourself first before handing that oxygen mask to the next person. So, you know, when the, when the oxygen yep. mask are down on the, the plane, plane. You, you've got to, as an adult, take so, so take a little moment for yourself. And I would highly recommend doing the same exercise that we just spoke about. Think of the last time you, you really felt good and let the feelings of that uh, memory just flood your system and go back in there with, with having sort of recharged yourself. Um, there is such a real thing of Zoom fatigue. Mm -hmm. And so those of us that are too much on this type of conference call and, and conversation know that it's a very real thing. And why is that, Pippa? And here's something very interesting, and it'll be interesting for our kids as well, uh, doing school online, is our bodies are used to picking up signals from other bodies lifting of the eyebrows which teenagers mm. know too well from <laughs> you know from their parents lifting of the eyebrows grimacing on the face tightness in the jaw we see it we pick it up and we we uh, regulate to that so so we pick up on cues from other people now we've been told when everyone, and I'm glad I'm not seeing everyone on the screen right now. So I don't know. I know that there's now still sort of 46 people online, but I can't see them all. But I'm seeing you. So I'm picking up on your facial expressions. But sometimes when we've got a lot of people there, apparently we automatically try and pick up on the facial expressions. Wow. That we just and so we're working overtime because we're not no just doing our brains one are person. exhausted. We're sometimes yeah. doing 20 and we get exhausted. Um, so there's such a real thing as Zoom fatigue and, and we need empathy for ourselves. And I think that for that parent who's exhausted at the end of the day, there is room also to say to our kids, I'm exhausted. Come, just come sit here with mom for a bit. Let's just stare out the window <laughs> together <laughs> or, you know, just come sit with me. I so need to just be with you right now. I can't give much. But I'd love us just to have a cup of tea together. So yeah. keep it simple. Keep it simple. Go back to the basics and just remember kindness, caring, comfort, hugging, um, 
showing up in the best way we can, but you do not have to be super, super parent and super woman. Really forget it. We've done too much of that for too long. It's yeah. time to be real. It's time to be authentic. It's time to be who we are. If we need to say sorry 10 times a day, then say sorry 10 times a mm. day. Stop being so hard um, on, on, on yourself. So yeah, this yeah. son, I see, oh my goodness, he was at school camp. Oh, and he this came back into, yeah. into the world of social distancing. He was looking forward to socializing with his family and his friends because he'd been away for so long. And um, uh, in fact, the last day he was at school was the 28th of February. And he now has to deal with online schooling, oh. mm. catching up with the, the weeks he missed on camp. He's, he's not motivated. His sleeping patterns are are affected but he is eating <laughs> aren't they all, <laughs> like we all are <laughs> okay um all right uh, a bit impatient i'm trying not to be hard on him okay so i think the same thing there is to to bring it into a normality i do like the idea of having a routine i think our kids do need a routine i think we can have that family meeting sit down make up a roster sort out the chores say we are team you know uh, we team Hudson, this is our logo, this is uh, how we, you know, how, how, how we work together. Um, I know it's cheesy, but if you want to make a kind of vision board for the next few weeks, you, 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 you can do that. I've mm -hmm. had some families do some great uh, charts that they've put up on the fridge of their logos and their mission statements of who they are, you know, and how okay. they're going to be as a family and, 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 and what values they want to live by over the next three weeks. I think that's a great uh, reminder, but absolutely have that family meeting, set up the roster, set up the chore uh, calendar and stick to the schedule and then try and find uh, write the schedule around your work time too. So you could say, right, I can see on my son's schedule, he's got a break between two and three. I'm going to make my break that time too. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean we have to do something, but I'm available during that time. And you, and you can say, this is time when I'm available. I'm available for a chat, for a foot massage. You can massage mm. my foot for a change. <laughs> and, you know, and you actually kind of come in, but I think we've got to come back to being real stop trying to be perfect and especially for this 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 kid i think there's going to come a time when you say to him okay i'm sorry for you that you didn't get your socializing and you didn't get your family time at some point you've got to reach that level where you say okay but enough's enough like we've got to get with the program stop moping around yes i see that you've lost a lot and you've missed out mm. on a lot. But let's focus on what we can be grateful for. Let's focus on what we can do as a family together. Let's focus on, on the good things. And if we have to, Pippa, then we start a family gratitude exercise all over again. We used to do that when our kids were three. Yeah. We start it again. And we go around the table and say, what are we grateful for? I've got a couple of young adults in my home right now. And um, I just say, we're doing a check-in. And I want to know how you are mentally, emotionally, physically. And I pull a bit of psychologist's <laughs> rank, you know, and I say, how's everyone? And I yes. literally go around the table. And everyone at the end of it is actually quite relieved of it. I mean, even the young adults are rolling their eyes, you know, saying, <laughs> oh, yeah, we go again. But it kind of just gets stuff off their chest. And, and um, I get to sort of check in with where everyone's at. So, so I think sometimes we do need to be uh, i'm using that word sassy a lot but i think we, we we have to find that part of ourselves that can actually um uh, coach our children back into mm. wellness and back into like just being authentic it's tough yes it is tough it's tough for all of us and we can uh, uh stand up and have a good attitude or not. So let's find it within ourselves to go back to the qualities that we know make us better people. Megan, I think we've, we've got through all of the listener questions. So a couple of closing sort of comments. I'm going to go right back to where we started. One of the most difficult things about this incredibly difficult situation is the uncertainty. We don't know. We know that... Um, um, uh, nominally level four lockdown commences on Friday, but we don't know how long it's going to last. And we don't know how long until 
we're able to go and visit friends again until the beaches are open and kids can go for a surf again, etc. Given all that unpredictability, any thoughts on, on helping parents coach their kids through that lack of certainty? Because I think that's the one thing a lot of them are struggling with, that it's, it's, it's one thing to ask us to manage this when it was, it would end on the, 20, the 16th of April, and then it wasn't the 16th of April anymore, it was the 30th of April, and what if it's going to move again? How do we help them adjust to that unpredictability? Yeah. So, Pippa, this, of course, is my opinion. Um, I, I, I know I might be sitting here as an expert, but, of course, you need to know that I'm not an expert on on these very unusual circumstances um, that have happened. Mm -hmm. So of course, this is my opinion. And my opinion is, is that we actually don't want to adapt too much. So we don't want to now be perfect coronavirus families, you know, that are like totally coping with lockdown and like this beautiful way. So, so let's not be a perfectionist about wanting our kids to be perfect, us to be perfect, everything to be just right. Of course, of course, if we, we got to have moans and goats. We got to say, I'm in a bad mood. I need time on my own. I'm going to bed early. I don't feel like sitting at supper tonight. I'm actually taking my supper and I'm going to sit in front of the TV and giving us all that kind of space to be able to be more natural with our reactions and our responses. Um, I've said it over and over, and it's the only thing that's helping me is we've got to get our wellness right. You have to get, if you've made a stash of alcohol and you're drinking alcohol every night, believe me that it's affecting your mood and it's affecting your capacity to cope. Stop it. Just stop it. If you're reaching for sugar all the time, try and at least cut back on that and or, or up your, the amount of water and, 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 and fruit and, and healthy veg that, that you are uh, eating and drinking. Um, I do my meditating every single day. And if I'm not in the mood for meditating, then I listen to a guided meditation. I just then do some breath work. So I just do some really nice short five breaths. Remembering you want a nice long out breath because the out breath calms the body down. We need to do that. I think um, coming back to basics, getting our wellness in place is my very, very best advice. And, and I don't think we want to be fully adapted to being able to handle lockdown. I think we've got to remind ourselves that it's actually a good thing if we are feeling a little unsettled that this isn't normal. So up your exercise, up your exercise and try to cope. Up your um, chatting to friends. It's really good to check in with others. Um, up your family time together around stuff that you like doing, but don't expect to be 100% happy. If, if, if you are, then um, you know maybe you are a very, very, very good introvert because I think the introverts are doing a better right now <laughs> doing than, better the, than the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Pippa, I hope that helps. And I don't know if you mm. want to add to that. Oh, here's a quote. Well, I think yeah, we should future, finish with this. The best uh, the thing about lovely... the is that it only comes one day at a time. I love that. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> so Thanks, Ellen, Ellen quoting Lincoln Abraham is, Lincoln. Love yeah, it. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? So thank you so much, uh, uh, Pippa. This was a great conversation, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, Me too. Uh, Me too. Uh, just I want to just tell uh, it. To, yeah, it really, it, I think it's so important that we remind ourselves, as you've done so effectively today, that we are not in this alone and that we're not the only ones worrying the worries that we're worrying and struggling with sleep and having kids who might be acting up from time to time. I think it's so important to keep that perspective that others are going through it too and that it's okay to not have every day be perfect. Megan, I just want to, in closing, remind everybody um, – uh, about your book. Uh, Megan's book, as I said earlier, is called How to Raise a Man. Uh, there it is. It's published by Penguin Random House. Although it's called How to Raise a Man, The Modern Mother's Guide to Parenting Her Teenage Son, I would recommend it even if you've only got females in the house as well, because it is packed full of so much insight into the teenage brain and the development stages they're going through and why they might be pushing back and pulling forwards at different stages and, and what it's all about. It is such a helpful read, Megan. Um, I've been quoting you. you in my own head for many months oh, since reading right. it. 
<laughs> and um, so two things. Firstly, it is available right now in ebook form. So if you are wanting to and comfortable reading in ebook form, you'll find it on Take A Lot, you'll find it on Kindle, you can buy it from Snaplify and Apple Books and Google Play. If you are like me, one of those who prefers a book in hand because it smells right, you're going to wait, hopefully not too much longer until the lo local exclusive books is open again and you will find it retailing there at around about 230 Rand a copy. And um, we don't know when that's going to be. It's one of those things we've got to say, let's wait and see where this goes. Let's take these one day at a time uh, until we have clarity. Let's not try and sweat the stuff that is outside of our control. And that goes for the adults in the house as much as the kids. Megan DeBeyer, thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pippa. It was gorgeous being with you. And just I also wanted to say that I am starting an online mother's course on the 5th of May, but the Fabulous. people can just get hold of me through my Facebook, Megan DeBeyer. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And to, okay. I think, the 40-odd people who are still with us, thank you so much for joining us and making this so interactive and fun. We really enjoyed having you with us. Yes. If it is your first experience of Cape Talk, may this not be your last one, please. You will find us on 567 Medium Wave in the Cape Town area, but you can also listen anywhere in the country online on capetalk.coza, on our app, which is free to download, and on channel 885 on DSTV. And again, our thanks to Penguin Random House and to Exclusive Books for co-hosting this event. It's really been fun. Have a wonderful afternoon, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.